In this video, um, we're going to talk about the concavity of a graph and how we can use the second derivative um, to determine where a graph is what we say concave up or concave down. So the second derivative gives us the rate of change of the derivative. So it's the rate of change of the rate of change. So what it's actually telling us is how fast the function is increasing or decreasing. So it's telling us the rate at which uh, the increasing or decreasingness is changing. Um, what this actually does for the graph is it, it has an effect on the shape of the graph. Okay, so this is, this is how we tell concavity. So let's just think about this example here. So here's a graph. Um, where is this function increasing or decreasing? So this is something that we've done before. So remember, increasing means going up as you move to the right okay so we can see on this part of the graph the function is increasing and also on this part of the graph the function is increasing because we're going up as we move to the right so it's going to be increasing on the interval from negative infinity to negative three and then again from negative one to infinity and it's going to be decreasing on the interval from negative 3 to negative 1. Now, what if we want to know where is the second derivative, positive or negative? Okay, so that this one is, so when it's increasing, it means that the first derivative was positive. And when it's decreasing, it means the first derivative is negative. Um, so what about the second derivative? So if the second derivative uh, is positive, that means that the rate of change of the first derivative is increasing. So that means that the first derivative is um, getting bigger. Oops. So what we want here, okay, so f double prime of x, okay, bigger than zero, means that the slopes uh, are increasing. Because remember, the first derivative represents the slope of the curve. And if the second derivative is positive, it means that the first derivative is increasing. So that means that the slopes are increasing. So we want to try and think about the slopes on this graph. So let's draw some tangent lines. Um, so let's say I want to draw tangent line okay like here um, so it's fairly steep and positive if I'm a bit higher closer to negative 3 okay it's still pretty steep um, and positive but a little bit less steep okay now if I'm up here closer to negative 3 it's getting closer to 0 right so at negative 3 our tangent line is actually zero. So it's positive. So on this interval, the tangent lines are positive, but they're approaching zero. So that means that they're getting smaller. Okay, so up until here, slopes, I'm just gonna do an arrow. They're getting smaller, they're decreasing. Now, what if I keep going past negative three? So let's say I'm over here. So the tangent line looks something like this. Did the slope get bigger or smaller? Well, uh, the slope is negative now, so that's less than zero. So that means that it decreased further. If I keep going, okay, so like here, okay, this is more negative. So we're still getting smaller. Okay, around negative two, okay, it's still a bit steeper. Okay, now after negative two, something happens. Oops, that wasn't a very good tangent line. So I get steep and steep and steep, and then because at negative one, oops, the tangent line is actually zero again, I have to start getting closer to zero. 
So that means that I start to get, oops, shoot. I start to get bigger. I gotta draw some better tangent lines here. Um, so here's a tangent line. It's getting kind of messy. So it's around negative two where the graph is sort of the steepest and then it starts to level out again. Okay, now after <clears throat> x equals negative one, okay, the tangent line is now positive again and it keeps getting steeper and steeper. <coughs> so, until, so from, until about negative two, um, the slopes uh, get smaller. Okay, because they are very steep, and then they go to zero, and then they go negative. Okay, after negative two, they turn around. Okay, so then they start, they, they're very negative, um, and then they start getting less negative, so approaching zero, and then they turn positive. So on this side, the slopes get bigger. Okay, so when the slopes are getting smaller, that means the rate of change of the derivative is decreasing. So that's going to mean the second derivative is negative. So f double prime is less than zero on the interval from negative infinity to about negative two. And then when they're increasing, that's when the second derivative is going to be positive. So that's from negative two to infinity. So maybe I'll just write here, um, derivative is decreasing. Okay, now what do we notice about all these tangent lines? So if you look at the tangent lines, um, when your x is smaller than two, negative 2, you can see that the tangent lines are always above the graph. Now when we're from negative 2, to infinity, the tangent lines now lie below the graph. Okay, that's how you can tell the difference in concavity. Okay, so for each concave up and concave down, we have an informal and a formal. Okay, so um, we say that a function is concave up on the interval from a to b informally if um, the graph, what we say is holds water. Oops. Okay, uh, on that interval. So what do we mean by that is you're always dumping, so let's say this is my graph, okay? If you dump water from the top, okay, it's gonna collect, it's gonna hold the water. Okay, the more formal version is that the tangent line um, lies below the graph of the function on the interval. Okay, so that was from negative two to infinity. All these tangent lines um, that I drew, okay, they lie below the graph. Okay, so that's where it's concave up. And if you think about dumping water on here, we can't see the graph very well, but, okay, so when it's less than negative two, um, the water is going to run off, right? But sort of at negative two, it starts to collect. So the graph, the, because I've drawn all these tangent lines on, it's hard to see, okay? But the graph sort of, um, it's a very slight change, okay? But it's going to start to collect the water there. Um, so concave down, we have similar definitions. So informally, we say the graph does not hold water. On the interval, okay, so it's like something like this. You always think about dumping the water from the top. Okay, and it's going to run down the sides, okay, and not collect anywhere. Um, so formally, we say that the tangent line lies, 
lie above the graph. Okay, and then an inflection point is the point where the function changes concavity. Okay, so in our graph, this point at negative 2, where we switched from concave uh, down to concave up, this would be a point of inflection. Okay, sometimes we call that a POI. Uh, or you can say inflection point. Okay, it doesn't matter. They're the same. So, um, just as a function can be increasing or decreasing on an interval, it can be concave up, concave down, and it could be switched from one or the other. So, just to give you a few sort of pictures, if we had a parabola, okay, so something like this. Okay, so this is always uh, concave up, okay, but it decreases from negative infinity to zero and then increases from zero to infinity. So it switches its increasing decreasing, but it's in fact always concave up. Um, if it was upside down, so flipped over the x-axis, then it would be always concave down and the increasing decreasing would switch, okay? Uh, maybe you switch, um, so we could have something like that, okay? So here, we're always concave uh, down. I didn't write that very well. Okay, but it, it decreases, um, I need to give this a point, I guess, maybe this is like one, okay, it decreases from uh, negative infinity to one, and then increases from one to infinity. Um, so here we have not changed concavity yet, okay, maybe you have one. That goes, okay, maybe something like that. Okay, so at this point, it seems like we change concavity. So let's call this, I don't know, two. Okay, so it looks like here, um, we're always increasing. But it's concave up from negative infinity to 2, and then concave down from 2 to infinity. Okay, and then this point here, where it switches, would be a point of inflection. Okay, maybe let's just do one more picture. I'm not going to write as much. Okay, so something common that happens... is okay something if you get like a, this is like for all polynomials kind of look like this Oops. okay so here and here would be critical uh, numbers because the tangent line is zero okay but if you want to think about where the concavity changes it looks like we're concave down, concave down, and then around here we switch to concave up. Okay, so we would say this point, which is not a critical number for this function, this would be where our point of inflection is because it changes concavity there. So how do we test for concavity? It's very similar to how we tested for increasing, decreasing. So if you have a function with derivatives, so it's twice differentiable, so there's f prime and f double prime existing at everywhere on the interval, then we say that f is concave up or concave upward if the second derivative, f double prime, is positive for all x in the interval, and it's concave down or concave downward 
if the second derivative is negative for all points in the interval. Okay, now um, my students always tell me, so I might as well tell you. Okay, so if you have a positive um, second derivative, okay, that means that you're happy. Okay, and a happy face is a concave up shape. Okay, if you're a negative person, that means that you're sad, okay, which means that you're frowning, and a frown is like a concave down shape. Okay, so you're down like a frown, um, or you're happy, um, so you're positive. Okay, so that's how you can tell. Um, so, just like in the first derivative, uh, a function can only change from concave up to concave down, or vice versa, if the second derivative switches from positive to negative, or vice versa. Okay, now what type of x values can this happen at is the same as what it was for the first derivative, except for the second derivative. So this can happen when the second derivative is zero, because then I can switch from positive to negative, or vice versa. It could happen when the second derivative does not exist, because I might have a jump in the second derivative. Um, or it could happen when the function does not exist. Okay, so if, the, if I have an asymptote, um, say, then the function doesn't exist, anything can happen on either side. Now, just to make a brief note, okay, so here, this is what we're really looking for is like a vertical asymptote here. Okay, now these points where the, the function doesn't exist, okay, they usually show up here as well. Okay, just like they did for the first derivative, okay, but they're not in the domain. Oops. So because they're not in the domain, it means that they cannot be points of inflection. Okay, so inflection points must have an x value with either the second derivative equal to zero or the second derivative at the x value does not exist. Okay, so these are like our critical numbers, okay, but they are for the second derivative. So sometimes I refer to these as possible points of inflection. Okay, now not all of them will be inflection points or inflection numbers, um, but they could be. So those are the things we want to look for. So let's just do an example. So let's say this is our function f of x. So it's negative x to the 4 plus 6x squared minus 3. And we want to know where is it concave up and where is it concave down and all the inflection points if there are any. Um, so what we want to do, take the derivative, okay, so f prime of x is going to be negative 4x cubed plus 12x plus 0. Um, now, we don't care about the increasing, decreasing for this example, okay, so we just, we're going to go straight to the second derivative here, so that's going to be negative 12x squared plus 12. So I can factor out, I'm going to factor out a negative 12. Then I'm going to have x squared minus 1. So this actually could factor as negative 12 times x minus 1 times x plus 1. Because x squared minus 1 is a difference of squares. Okay, so now we want to do the same thing as we did before. Okay, so we take the second derivative and set it equal to 0. We want to find all points where that happens. So that's going to be where negative 12 x plus 1 times x minus 1 equals 0. So because I have it factored, that means that one of these factors has to be 0. Okay, negative 12 is never 0, so I don't have to worry about that. So it means that x plus 1 is 0 or x minus 1 is 0, which means that x is equal to negative 1 or x is equal to positive 1. Okay, so these are two critical numbers, or possible inflection numbers. Oops. 
Okay, now we also want to check where does the second derivative not exist. Okay, but it's a polynomial, which means that it always exists, so there's none of this type. Okay, so we don't actually have to worry about that. So the only possible inflection numbers are 1 and negative 1. So we do exactly what we did before. We put them on a number line. Okay, so negative 1 is going to split, and then positive 1 is going to split again. So I get these three intervals. So just like we did before, we want to pick a point in each interval. So I want to pick something less than negative 1, maybe negative 2. And then I'm going to plug it into the second derivative to see if it's positive or negative. Because remember, these um, at negative 1, uh, f double prime is 0. And at positive 1, f double prime is also 0. So these are the only places where it can switch. So that means in this entire interval, it's either positive or negative. So if we test a single point and it's positive, we know the whole interval is positive. Okay, so if I plug in negative 2, I'm going to have negative 12 times negative 2 minus 1 times negative 2 plus 1. So this is negative 12 times negative 3 times negative 1. So we don't even need the number, okay? But if you want, it's negative 36. Um, but what you can think of is this is a negative times a negative times a negative. Three negatives make a negative. Okay, so this interval is negative. Now I want to check something between one, negative 1 and 1. So 0 is a nice number. So f double prime of 0 is going to be negative 12 times 0 minus 1 times 0 plus 1. So this is a negative times a negative times a positive. So that's two negatives make a positive and another positive. This one is going to be a positive number. In fact, it's positive 12. Okay, so I get a positive there. Something bigger than 1, maybe 2. I'm going to have f double prime of 2 is negative 12 times 2 minus 1 times 2 plus 1. So this is a negative times a positive times a positive. Okay, so that is going to be a negative. Okay, so when you're negative, you're down like a frown. Okay, so in these intervals, I'm sad. And when I'm positive, I'm happy, like a happy face. Okay, so then I know that we're going to be concave down on the interval from negative infinity to negative 1, and then again from 1 to infinity. Okay, and we're going to be concave up on the middle interval from negative 1 to 1. Okay, so there's our concavity. Okay, now it also wants the inflection points. Okay, so because it's switched at negative 1, this is going to be a point of inflection, and so is the value, the point at x equals 1. Okay, so we actually get inflection points at both because it switches concavity at both. So we're going to have two points of inflection. So the inflection points are, okay, so it's going to be negative 1, and the y value is actually 2 here, okay, which I'm going to talk about in a second, and positive 1 is also y value 2. Okay, so remember, because they're points, um, they should have a y value. Okay, so how did I know that the y value was 2? So I'd actually plug in negative 1 into the original function. So that's negative, negative 1 to the 4, plus 6 times negative 1 squared, minus 3. So negative 1 to the power of 4 is positive 1, so this is actually negative, positive 1, 
plus 6 times positive 1 minus 3. So I get 6 minus uh, 3, or minus 4, sorry, is 2. And this is actually the same. So this is f of 1. So it's negative 1 to the 4 plus 6 times 1 squared minus 3. We also get 2. So you plug into the regular function to find the y values always. Okay, so for our points, we want to have both coordinates. Um, so that's how we can use the second derivative to determine the concavity of the graph, which is going to give us a more accurate sketch.